The Yemcom Center is located in Moorhead, Minnesota. It's owned by the city of Moorhead and it's home to a number of different nonprofits, including the Historical and Cultural Society of Clay County. And we run the museum here at the Yemcom Center, which is the home of the Yemcomst Viking ship replica and the Hopperstad Stav Church replica. In March of 2009, the Red River of the North basically came all the way up here and tried to swallow us whole. Fortunately, the college students saved us and came and for 14 straight hours built a sandbag dike all the way around the church and around to the front of the building. Uh, the city had put a clay dike at the back door, which secured us from a lot of the river, but you could literally reach over the dike and touch river water this way. In order to save the, the Yamcom Center, the City of Moorhead staff and the HCS staff had to work together to work round the clock to keep the dike uh, secure. So this is downtown Fargo, and this is Moorhead, and this is our little peninsula, and you can see this was taken during the crest, and we are completely surrounded by water, the water coming up all the way around here. We had to park here and hike in over here, and then uh, go through river water, and then uh, get into the building that way. But as you can see, we had a dike back here, a clay dike back here, and then the students came and starting right there, they did a, a sandbag dike all the way around um, and saved us. The, the church would have floated away. It was very threatening and it was um, very scary and traumatic, uh, to say the least. My staff stayed on to move as much upstairs from below surface storage to the level of the ship, which is at 42 feet. No one in their wildest dreams ever imagined the Red River would come beyond 42 feet. That's a 500-year flood stage, and that actually happened um, in 2009. So we have now been fortified against uh, up to 45 feet. So we're, we're feeling a lot more secure these days. So we were not prepared, which is why business continuity plans are very important. We ended up being closed for 30 days. And part of that was that the power lift station uh, that powers the building um, had to be shut down because of the river. We still had electricity, but we had no running water. And as a consequence, that meant that some staff couldn't make it in. They also needed to protect their own homes from the flood, and that became the priority. Um, if your home was in danger, you did not have to stay here. Nobody had to stay here. The people who stayed, stayed willingly. Basically, archivist Mark Peel, who's now been here for 30 years, was the one who uh, made sure that the archives stayed dry and uh, organized. And the rest of the staff helped to move artifacts, the rarest artifacts, upstairs. Unfortunately, the water did not recede for a month. It came up and it crested, but it took a month for it to go back down to 38 feet. And 38 feet is the, is the height at which it no longer flows in the back door. We couldn't have the public here. That was the other part of it that we had no idea would happen. We couldn't have the public here if there was any danger that water might come in while they were here. We had to basically close shop for 30 days and we were not prepared to lay off staff. I was not prepared to give continuing to raise funds, uh, write grants, do the planning for the following year, all of the things that we normally do in March. We took a huge financial hit that year, and we did have to tap into a line of credit, which fortunately we were able to get. Holly Heitkamp with the city of Moorhead tracked the timelines and did the exact day by day, when, when was the river at what height, and what did we do in response. And so then uh, she created a timeline that would tell us, at this point we have to close the back door. At this point, nobody gets into the parking lot. At this point, we're closed to the public. And, and so we have a step-by-step, -step, and it's all according to the water levels. 
And then we began developing our emergency response plan. Museums have to have that, and museums with collections especially have to be mindful of, of having emergency response plans. You have to know how what would happen if a little fire started and the sprinklers went off and all of the collection got sprayed with water. Um, we have twice had toilets overflow from upstairs into our collection with minimal damage, but still we had to move very, very quickly. So even something as simple as having a huge supply of old towels available to soak up water, to making sure we have all of the board members' phone numbers, that we have all the emergency management phone numbers for the local people, and that's tucked into our wallets so that um, the staff can operate a phone tree immediately and get some help. All of that is always contingent on what the authorities will allow us to do once something has happened. Uh, if the building is ever damaged by tornado or fire, we have to wait until we have permission to come back in. Uh, in this case, we didn't leave, and really the community pulled together in a way that was completely unique. My brother lives in Nebraska, and we said, why is this such a big deal? Why is the national news making such a big deal out of this? And he said, because you're doing it yourself because you're handling it yourself. You are not waiting for somebody to come in and save you. And that's, that's really not seen that much around the country. One of the main things for uh, any businesses, families, and or individuals is, is a plan. To have a plan during uh, any kind of crisis, emergency, disaster. Communication is one of the most vital things in planning. You have to plan ahead of time because once a disaster or emergency happens, it's too late. In 2009, 2010, 2011, we're all declared a federal disaster here in Clay County. By 2010, 11, and 12, there was a lot of plans. Everybody had planned. They knew what they had to do. Everything went so much smoother. Again, that's just for your personal for your business, for your nonprofit, for your large companies, they all have to have a plan.